So 10 milliliters of zinc solution along with another 10 milliliters of zinc solution. We're going to mix with that 20 milliliters of hydroxide solution of the same concentration. And I want to pause there to show that we formed a precipitate. So we have some zinc hydroxide here that we form by mixing the zinc and the hydroxide together. We're going to do the exact same process over here. Double the volume. Okay. So what I want to do next is I now want to take that and I want to show two different reactions. The first one, I want to take the zinc hydroxide and add some strong acid to it. So we're going to take some hydrochloric acid solution that's a little bit in excess here. It's a little bit higher concentration. So we see as that hydrochloric acid reacts with the zinc hydroxide that it ends up dissolving that precipitate away and there's a chemical reaction taking place. So because we're adding the zinc hydroxide to a strong acid, it's safe to assume that the zinc hydroxide is acting as a base to react with that strong acid. But interestingly, if we take that same zinc hydroxide that we have left over here, and we react that with a strong base. So here I have some very concentrated sodium hydroxide solution. You can see that as I add that, that that also clears up the precipitate. And so therefore, what we're seeing is that there's some kind of reaction between the zinc hydroxide and the sodium hydroxide. So if a strong base is reacting with the zinc hydroxide, that would therefore make the zinc hydroxide an acid. And so zinc hydroxide is an example of a compound that it can act as an acid and as a base. And therefore we call that an amphoteric substance. So in the first case, we have the zinc hydroxide reacting with the strong acid, the hydrochloric acid. That ends up producing zinc chloride, which will be in solution, it'll be dissociated, and then water. And of course, to balance that, we would require a 2 and a 2. And so the hydroxide component of the zinc hydroxide is capable of reacting as a base. with that hydrochloric acid in order to get that reaction to occur. However, in the second situation, in the second situation we have the strong base reacting with the zinc hydroxide, which would, have, would imply then that that's acting as an acid. So if we look at what's actually happening there, we're forming a complex ion where those excess hydroxide ions actually surround the zinc ion in a Lewis acid base reaction where the zinc is acting as an acid. So therefore, the zinc component of this allows us to act as a Lewis acid. The base component allows us to act as a Lewis, Lewis base or as a bronson lowry base. And therefore, we have an amphoteric substance, something that can act as both an acid and a base. Uh, and this one, of course, to fully balance this, we would require two hydroxides to react with it. And you'll note that we added a large excess of hydroxide in, to get, in order to get that to form and to form quickly.